This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I think we have uh, the majority of the people here, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, hopefully, uh, we won't have any technical issues. We've got um, a couple hundred people signed up, and uh, it looks like we've already got uh, close to 100 people in the room. So hopefully our bandwidth will uh, will allow us to get through this without any technical glitches. Um, thank you everyone for taking the time to come out for this today. We we greatly appreciate it. Uh, with the current situation, we're planning to do a lot more um, uh, events like this online, uh, more training events and and overviews and things like this. So uh, please give us your feedback at the end of us and let us know um, how this went for you and uh, how we can help tailor these to uh, better suit our customers in the future. So with that, uh, let's get started. So this is gonna be a, a overview of the Momaki 3D UJ553 full color printer. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our other 3D offerings as well, but we'll really be focusing on the 3D UJ553 for this presentation. Uh, as a start, I know that we have a lot of um, current Momaki dealers on the on the call today, but we also have a lot of people who are new to Momaki. So I just wanted to take a minute to talk about Momaki as a company. So Momaki Engineering was founded in 1975 in Nagano Prefecture of Japan, over 1,900 employees. Uh, we are traded on the on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. And in 2019, we had annual sales uh, of a little over 550 million. Right. So our business units, uh, signing graphics, industrial products, which for us is really the UV flatbed machines, which we'll talk a little bit more about because that was really kind of the birthplace for the uh, the 3D printer, the color 3D printer, um, textile and apparel, software. Again, you'll see some of that with 3D Link and the printer driver for this machine. Factory automation, which has a lot to do with IoT and uh, robotics tying together automation in a factory, and printing services. As far as Momaki USA goes, founded in 1999, our headquarters is here in Suwannee, Georgia, which is where Jaime and I are today. Uh, over 130 employees. Uh, we serve North, Central, and South America. Uh, we have locations and demo centers in Suwannee, Georgia, Boston, Massachusetts, Milwaukee, Los Angeles, Rockaway, New Jersey, Irving, Texas, and Toronto, Canada. Uh, we currently have two of the 3D UJ553 printers in Suwannee, Georgia, and we have one in Los Angeles. So those are in the demo rooms uh, and they are up and running. So for the Momaki 3D offerings, we do offer the 3D FF222, which is a fused filament fabrication machine. So it uses a PLA filament. Uh, and the main idea with Momaki uh, bringing this product out was to tie it with our UJF uh, flatbed UV printers in order to make UV, uh, excuse me, UJF jigs and also some thermoforming molds. Uh, you may have also seen on our website, uh, we do have a COVID-19 uh, news page now and we do have some 3D applications. So you can see this machine uh, and get files for printing masks and face shields and things along those lines. We also recently announced the 3D GD1800, and this is a gel dispensing printer, much, much larger. It's a single color printer, but it has the ability to print objects uh, up to 70 inches tall, uh, 57 inches wide. It's, it's a huge printer. This is a fantastic machine for doing POP displays, signage, and uh, larger thermoforming molds. So as I said, this does print only in one color, but you have the ability to use an adhesive wrap, much in the same way that you would wrap a car, or to paint, airbrush, uh, in order to get full color onto the, the prints themselves. Uh, this is something that we'll go into much more in depth in, in a later webinar. So on to the 3D UJ553. So this is what we're saying is the world's truly, uh, or the world's first truly photorealistic full color 3D printer. Uh, there are other color 3D printers in the market right now, but nobody can get anywhere near the 10 million colors that we can. So that image that you see there, that was 3D printed. There was no uh, painting afterwards, no coating, no retouching, nothing. That is exactly how the print looks coming out of the machine, right? So we use a pigmented uh, liquid photopolymer resin. Uh, 
these are resins that are already pigmented in cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and white. And then we also have a clear resin, which doesn't have any pigments in it. And then, of course, our water-soluble support material. So we jet these resins through eight industrial inkjet heads, um, and we cure it to a solid using LED UV lamps. Again, very similar to the UJF series, if you're familiar with those. Uh, basics of the machine, uh, it prints 20 inches by 20 inches by 12 inches. That's the maximum build area on it. Uh, we talked already a little bit about the print heads. Uh, there's four print modes. You've got a high quality, a standard, and a high speed. And then we have a special print mode uh, called color and clear, which is when you're printing an opaque object inside of a clear object. So think of a, uh, uh, you know, a full color uh, sphere inside of a, a clear sphere. Um, again, the, we use UV LED curing. There's two uh, LED lamps that do the curing. There's a flattening roller, which maintains the, uh, the layer thickness on the machine. And there's a dedicated PC that comes with it with a touchscreen. So for the print heads themselves, again, they're piezoelectric print heads, um, but these are variable drop print heads, which are able to do seven different drop sizes, which gives us a, a really great control over the grayscale in each channel. Uh, 300 DPI print heads um, with a print width of 2.11 inches. Um, also, we'll talk a little bit about this later as well, but each of the print heads has full circulation, meaning that uh, the ink within the head is actually getting circulated, which helps us to remove air bubbles, which is less missing nozzles in a more stable uh, printing environment. The ink is actually uh, ink or resin. We use those kind of interchangeably on this machine. It is manufactured by Mamaki. The CMYK ink is comes in one liter bottles because you use very little of the, of the color. It's only half, the color's only being used on the outside edge of the print. And then we use 4.8 liter bottles for the white, the clear, and the water soluble support material, right? Uh, as I said, the, the ink is manufactured by Mamaki. And we do have a recyclable ink bottle program. So when you're done with the bottles, you can send them back to us and we'll recycle them. Uh, another great thing that we have, which you will see also on our 2D printers, is waveform control. So this allows us to send a very specific signal to the printhead in order to uh, tell that piezoelectric uh, crystal how and when to, to flex, right? So that allows us to have a very, very um, accurate drop size, drop shape, and drop placement. So you can have a head that has a higher resolution, but if you're not really accurate about where that droplet is going and the size of the droplet, it doesn't do you any good. So we really, really focus on making sure that the droplets that we send land where we want them to land uh, in the shape that we want them to land. Another great technology from Omaki that again is pulled from the 2D world is the nozzle check unit or the NCU. So there's a laser and a sensor that are below the print head when the print head is going back to the home position to purge. And that sensor knows where each droplet should be as the head fires. So the head will fire a, a purge and it will sense the droplets. And if it sees a missing droplet or it doesn't see a droplet that should be there, then the NCU will have an additional cleaning cycle happen. So you're automatically cleaning the heads. It helps to purge out uh, any, any missing nozzles, and then you can continue to print. This is super important because this is all happening uh, automatically. So when you're in longer prints, in, in some cases, these uh, 3D prints can be anywhere from uh, three hours to uh, 130 hours or more, a um, couple hundred hours. So it's really important that this all happens in an automated fashion. So this isn't anything that the operator is having to, to deal with. We also use a capping station, again, same as we use on the 2D side. So this is a, it's a, it's a, uh, a plate that sits below the, the print carriage uh, when the carriage is in the home position. So when you're not printing, this plate lifts up and each one of those um, seals that you see there seals around the head which keeps out any dirt, any debris, keeps air out, um, keeps the heads wet, and keeps the heads from cross-contaminating from each other. This is really important, especially in, in the environment that we're in right now, where possibly you, you may not print with the printer for a week or two. Um, 
you'll be able to go back, go through a regular cleaning cycle and start printing again. There, there's nothing uh, after an extended uh, print stoppage that would, that would require you to do anything more than just a standard maintenance because of this capping station. So the ink circulation, as we talked about earlier, uh, you can see that the ink supply starts in that five liter ink bottle, and then it actually pumps into an internal ink tank. So when you put the bottle in, the ink is pumped to the internal tank, and then all the printing happens from that internal tank. This allows us to remove the ink bottle and replace it with a fresh bottle while the print is still going on. We don't have to stop to, to change ink. Okay? So you'll see the full uh, length of the ink circulation system here and it goes again on the right hand side you'll see it goes all the way into the head assembly and it's circulating there so again this helps to uh, not only um, remove air bubbles for less clogged, clogged nozzles but it also keeps the pigments suspended and this is really important when you have heavier pigments like a, a white titanium pigment so all of that stays um, in suspension ink bubbles are removed and it really helps to keep the, the quality of the print uh, as high as possible. This machine is also the only um, full color 3D printer that has a user controllable ICC workflow. What that means is that using the Momaki Profile Master or MPM3 software, a user can create a specific ICC profile for their machine in their environment. Um, typically with other machines, you have a standard profile that is made at the factory and when the machine goes out, everybody's using exactly the same one. If you want that extra bit of control, you can use, again, MPM3, create a custom profile, will help you get the, the best quality out of your machine, or if you have multiple machines, it will help you align those machines so that they're all printing uh, the same. Oh, one other thing I should mention here. Uh, Momaki is the, also the only full color 3D printer manufacturer who supports both an sRGB and Adobe RGB 1998 color spaces. So this allows us to take a bet, to take better advantage of the wide gamut of our color pigments. From a design standpoint, uh, I'll relate this again to the 2D world because, of, because we do have a lot of uh, 2D um, dealers on. So there's a couple different ways that you can set up color for the 3D prints. You can use vertex color, and, the, and think of this as the same as a, uh, a vector graphic. So you have a shape, a polygon that you can select and you can assign a color to that specific shape, right? Um, or we can do 2D, or excuse me, uh, UV mapping, which is a raster-based workflow where you have a vector-based shape, in this case, the square that you see, and then you have a uh, 2D image, which we're wrapping around it. And that 2D image would be a raster image that you can open and edit in Photoshop. Uh, some samples of, of uh, software that we use for this, uh, Blender, which is an open source free software that anybody can download and use. We use ZBrush as well, very, very popular in the, uh, in the 3D design world. And we've started working a lot with Adobe on their Substance product. And we'll talk a little bit about more about that here in a second. So Substance is a, a, a company that was purchased by Adobe last year, um, and they've now rolled it into their, their suite of products. Um, and they sponsored a, a contest last year called Meet Matt. And the idea was that that figure that you see in the photo, that was given to artists as a completely white uh, model. Everybody got exactly the same one. And then the artist used the Substance software uh, to create and paint their own uh, characters on top of that model. And then they were all submitted for a contest. And then the winners went into this Meet Matt book. Uh, so we, uh, Mamaki is going to be sponsoring the Meet Matt 2 contest, which is going on now. A matter of fact, the, I believe the winners have already been announced. Um, and Jaime is currently printing the winning entries now. So, so the people who won, they get a model of their print or of, of their design printed out on the 3D UJ553. So we're printing those now and we'll be sending those out to the winners. Um, a great place to kind of see what's going on with that is just follow us on our Instagram account, which is just Momaki3D. And as we're printing more and uh, showing those, you'll be able to see them pop up there. Uh, another partner that we're very excited about is Fraunhofer. Uh, they have a software called Cutter, Cuttlefish and Cuttlefish is a, a enterprise level uh, color management software. Um, 
it allows you to um, really get the most out of your 3D file in, in a few different ways. One is that it has a very high-end ICC profile uh, generation uh, that's specific to 3D printing. Um, and it allows you to do color management with translucency as well, which is very difficult to do. Um, it does voxel-based color, meaning that uh, rather with the standard prints, where if you if you took a print and you cut it in half, you would see the center of it to be all white, voxel-based printing allows us to actually put color down throughout the entire model. Uh, and then the last thing is their uh, texture detail enhancement or TDE feature. So you can see in the image of the two vases there, very small vases, 1.6 inches high. Um, the one that was printed with their TDE software is much, much sharper, much better detail than the one without. So this is a software that's used by companies like Nike and Leica. Uh, again, it's an enterprise level software, but we're very excited to, to be testing with that and to uh, see what we can do with their software. All right. Uh, on the file prep side, so this is once the designer is done with the file, if you think of like uh, pre-flighting files in the printing world, um, checking for print print readiness. We use uh, Materialized Magics, we use uh, Autodesk NetFab, and then uh, our partner um, Mixed Dimensions, one of our customers that has three of our machines, uh, they have their own software, which is cloud-based, which is called Make Printable. So basically the idea is, uh, if you see in the image there, there's something called inverted normals. and 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 the image on the left, you can see that the top plate of that cube is actually facing downward, where it should be facing upward. So that's that's uh, what they talk about, something being inverted. So these softwares will go through and check and make sure that that uh, parts are watertight, that there's no inverted normals, that, that you can reduce the number of polygons in order to make the file easier to print, double check for wall thickness, do things like hollowing uh, parts out as well, or even separate piece, uh, bigger prints into, into multiple parts. So this is a software that we use uh, on a daily basis that Jaime uses to, to check customer files, prepare them and prep them for printing. So the 3D Link software, and this is something that Jaime is gonna go through in his section in much more depth, but this is software that's, that's created by Mamaki. It, it ships free with the printer, and this is basically your virtual build area. Um, so you can bring models in. We support uh, a lot of different uh, uh, file types. So STL, OBJ, PLR, excuse me, PLY, WRL, and 3MF file formats. Uh, these are standard industry standard file formats that um, if you go to download 3D models or you create your own, those will be uh, file formats that you can save in. Uh, we can assign color, we can assign transparency. Um, you can scale, rotate, step and repeat. Uh, you can um, set your different print modes. You can also get estimates for print time and print volume, and it will generate out reports in a PDF as well as a CSV file, so that will help you with uh, pricing and quoting. For the color modes, when we bring in a, an STL file, if we bring in the original STS, STL data, you can see you've got a red cube there. Uh, within the 3D Link software, we have the ability to take that cube and assign it to be white, assign it to be clear, uh, assign it to be a skeleton color, which means that we can we can put an outside color on it and then inside of it is clear, so you end up with a translucent tinted uh, object, or we can just assign a brand new color to it. So we had a red cube, we can tell that it's now a green cube. All of that you can do while just staying inside of the 3D Link software. The printer driver is the software that runs on the touchscreen, which is attached to the, uh, or the touchscreen and the PC, which are attached to the 3D UJ553 unit itself. So this is really your job control center. This is gonna show you a preview of your job that you're working on. Um, it will give you a status of where you are in the printing process. It will give you a status of what, how, many, how much ink you have remaining, how much hard drive space you have remaining. Uh, your current uh, printing queue, a history of jobs you've already printed. This is where you'll do all of your uh, daily uh, maintenance functions, set up things like which um, uh, which color space you want to support, sRGB or Adobe RGB 1998. You can get file information, um, screenshots, things like that. All of that happens within the printer driver software. And again, this is a software that's created by Mamaki. On the finishing side, our SW100 support material is water soluble. Um, 
there's a couple different ways that you can that you can deal with removing that material. So typically when we're when we're printing or when we're done printing, we're taking the print off of the bed and then we're kind of crumbling away um, the, the cured support material, which is kind of a waxy consistency. So that material is uh, just going straight into the trash. If it's if it's fully cured material, you can throw it right into the office trash. And then what's left, you can put uh, and just soak in plain water. If you want to speed up that process a little bit, you can use an ultrasonic cleaner, which would have uh, vibration heat and possibly agitation. Uh, you can also add uh, additives to that water uh, in order to speed up the process as well. So you can use uh, uh, a detergent. You can use um, uh, there's a couple different uh, off-the-shelf things like uh, butoxytriglycol that you can add a very light amount of that, which will help break down that support material. Uh, we've also partnered with a company called Post Process. Um, that's their machine there that you see. Um, and we use their detergent, which is called PG1. So basically when the print's out, crumble all the support material, the bulk of the support material away, then we drop it into that unit. It soaks you know, for a standard part, probably two or three hours, and it comes out, we rinse it off and it's ready to go. So as far as surface finishing goes, once you've done that finishing process, you can then uh, do additional uh, finishing if you'd like. So if you want to get a really uh, uniform matte finish, you can do media blasting, soda blasting, which is basically like uh, sand blasting, but just at, at, at a much uh, less abrasive uh, uh, media that we use. Uh, you can sand the parts, you can polish the parts. So if you see some of the clear parts, especially as Fred shows some of the uh, patch, packaging prototypes, uh, we do a lot of polishing with the clear there. Uh, or you can paint and coat them. You can, if you want to have a semi-gloss or a satin finish, you can you can spray paint them as well. Um, you can drill these parts. You can tap them, uh, and then it's, you can put about five kilograms of load on that that part once you once you've used a screw in it. So if you need to do any kind of mounting, uh, that is definitely possible. So we'll talk a minute about uh, competitive. Um, the term full color is, is used quite a bit in, in 3D printing now as you start looking at HP and uh, 3D systems and Stratasys. So they'll say full color, photorealistic, full spectrum. These are all kind of marketing terms. The reality, though, um, is that Momaki use, has the ability to create 10 million colors. 3D systems is, is 10 times less than that at 1 million colors. Stratasys is, is almost half of what they have. And then the HP machine, which we hear a lot about lately, um, they don't talk about the number of colors that they can create. And the reason being is that they can only do 512 colors. So if you look at a, a full uh, spectrum of 16 million colors versus a spectrum of 1,024 colors, you can see where you're really missing out in gradients. Uh, so this is really important for things like skin tones, any kind of transitions that you just aren't gonna get um, with a low number of colors, right? So the 10 million colors the Mamaki has, you're gonna have a much better uh, photorealistic output and a much, much better chance of being able to hit different um, spot colors, Pantone colors, things like that, right? A little bit more on the, on the uh, competitive side, again, the, the color machine from HP, the Jet Fusion 580, can do a maximum of 512 colors. Um, they don't, Put that in their marketing they talk about how their color printer accepts 16 million colors which is true you can ask for 16 million colors but the reality is that you can only print 512 and that graphic that you see there that's the closest they can get to uh to any kind of true color so on the support side our support structure for the 3d uj553 uh, we have a user site so when a user has our machine they can log into this site they can download manuals, they can download reference guides and, and uh, troubleshooting guides. Um, we do have our phone support, which is available 8.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, Monday through Friday. Uh, your local 3D dealer. So we use CAD Blue currently and Objects Unlimited in Canada. Um, they have trained technicians and they can have parts and supplies as well. Right, you've got your re regional Momaki office. That we went seven different offices in North America that we talked about earlier in the in the call. And then, in addition to those local technicians, uh, we also have a tech services group, which is based out of our corporate headquarters in Swanee, uh, and we have trained technicians there as well. And those can be dispatched out as needed. 
So uh, one thing that everybody wants to talk about is uh, what does all of this cost? So to give you an example, uh, the, the figure that you see on the right-hand side is a six-inch tall figure. Um, we laid it out in 3D Link, which is the center photo there, and we laid out three of them side by side just to uh, get the, uh, uh, the full bed in a, in a left to right sweep with the, um, the print carriage. It's the most efficient way to do it. So those three six-inch characters um, were printed in standard print mode. It took uh, just under nine hours. And you can see the total of ink there. Um, and that at, um, at our MSRP pricing, uh, including the support ink, so all of the resins and the support ink together, you're looking at a, a cost of about $35 US estimated uh, for each six inch figure. As far as the machine cost, so the 3D UJ553, the printer, uh, two full sets of ink, so one to prime the machine and one for you to start doing your production, uh, five days of installation, three days of training, you're just under $200,000 US. Uh, that price doesn't include shipping, rigging, or taxes, but you can see uh, compared to uh, our competitors like the Stratasys J750, uh, this is an extremely uh, affordable machine. Uh, this machine is is great for prototyping. It's also great for uh, short run production as well. And Fred will get more into that. All right, I think that's everything that I have. Uh, so thank you everybody. And I'll go through and answer some questions in chat. And other than that, I'm going to turn it over to Fred. Hi hey everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm here today to talk about the Mamaki 3D UJ553 printer. What distinguishes this printer from any other printer on the market is that we're able to print in 10 million colors photorealistically. And I'll be answering three questions. First question is, what is the value of printing in 10 million colors? The second question will be, how does this help me get my job done better? And third is, who's making money with this printer? So you can see here, this is a list of uh, market verticals that are currently using our printer. So um, entertainment industry, 3D printing, service bureaus, medical models, visual prototyping, GIS mod, uh, mapping and collectible figurines, architecture, and museum slash fine art. The entertainment industry is using uh, the, the printer extensively for props, pre-visualization, and exact color uh, maquettes. So the 10 million colors, as you can see in these photos, um, allows for the um, skin tones, the gradations, um, see the, the feathers on the, on the wing character that um, we're using the water soluble supports to be able to make fine details geometrically and um, visually using our colors. We're um, using terrain maps. Um, architecture is used for propping and for um, for animation, character design, once again for maquettes, and particularly special effects mark um, the special effects makeup and um, for pre-selling. Um, entertainment um, commodities um, with the figurines using the marketing and advertising. So these are four of our service bureaus in North America. It's Cad Blue, who has uh, two printers, one in Colorado and one in Boston. Mixed Dimensions, who I'll be talking about, who is um, the dynamic um, collectible business. They're, they're um, based in Northern California. Pictographics in Las Vegas and Objects Unlimited in Toronto, who's doing great work, is uh, both Cad Blue and Objects Unlimited are, are resellers who will sell you the print. So, another um, application that we're using is medical modeling. So, um, we, the printer has makes just incredible detailed prints. Um, the part on the left is a cross section of the cadaver's heart. And frankly, I've never seen a cadaver's heart before, but at the RSNA show in Chicago in December, I was told by radiologists that that was a striking resemblance and a just breathtakingly beautiful print of a cadaver's heart. And so what makes it so beautiful is the detailing in the uh, neutral 
colors in the beiges and the browns that um, will give surgeons the ability to make proper diagnosis. The next um, photograph over shows the hand in a translucent um, print. So we're able to see the, um, the tendons, the bones, and the shape of the hand in, in the clear material. And um, this, these types of models are used um, extensively in education. The next picture over shows uh, some models made by Mixed Dimensions for their Human Anatomy Kickstarter program. So as you can see, just the bone structure and the detailing in the musculature in the other uh, model just shows you what the um, printer can do. So once again, so the printer in the medical um, field is being used for pre-surgical visualization, the training, medical devices, and medical research. So here in this category, this market vertical uh, visual prototyping. So as you can see, there's um, footwear and just a variety of things in, in, this, in this category. But um, like the shoe, the, the hookah shoe, um, after I show my slides, I'll show you what that, I'll show you on the camera and maybe you'll get a better sense of it. But the gradation that you're getting in the turquoise and then, I mean, if you look at the color contrast between that orange and the turquoise or the aqua, whatever that color is, I mean, it's just, it's just, I mean, it's just, I'm, uh, I can't think of another word other than beautiful, how that color, all those transitions take place you know, definitely taking advantage of the, of the um, color gamut. So with the next um, device over, that kind of robotic arm and the astronaut character, we're basically, among, besides using the color, we're using the water-soluble support to make um, articulated models, so jointed. Um, there, is, there is support, obviously, in, the, in between the helmet and an astronaut's head that was um, carefully removed. So, I mean, so we're able to print any geometry. You're not limited by anything. Um, then on the next one over, the, the, the subtleties of that character's skin, and I particularly love the, um, the gradations of the backside of the veil. So we're gradating from clear to opaque and we're also gradating, I don't know if you could see it in the picture or not, but if you could see the uh, magenta, there's a gradation in the magenta as well. And then with the car, um, the cars we're using were um, textured in the Adobe Substance software, but um, you could see the color contrast once again in the oranges to the uh, blues and then with that kind of bluer uh, car. So, all the neutral shades, you know, to get from the um, higher key, I mean, neutral shades of the blues to more saturated blues are just something that has not been available in 3D printing whatsoever. So something like that would have had to have been hand painted in the past. And it's just something that, that um, frankly, the marketplace is still figuring out how to take advantage of it. But, but these are companies that are doing that. So another application is packaging. So um, what I love about this group, and, and I, uh, I'll show you the green tube. Um, that, that tube right there is polished. So I'll show you what that thing looks like coming straight out of a printer and then being polished. So um, I'll probably also show you an eyeball that I polished. And this, um, what's amazing about this material, the clear material, it polishes to a surface kind of glass-like, polishes better than any other uh, clear material that I've worked with in the past. And um, the eyeballs in particular, I, as a salesperson, polished on my own. So frankly, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So um, we're taking advantage of the ICC profiling to get exact color matches in this grouping. And um, once again, um, the water-soluble support allows for any geometry to be um, printed. So in this next vertical here is architecture. So architecture has always been a particularly problematic um, issue for uh, 3D printing. The, the trick being that by the time you scale down the size of a building down to something that's printable, you're dealing with um, 
typing like in a second print. Um, that's just it, the often is just to find a detail to printing, let's say in the powder back in the old days with the powder printing. But um, because we're printing, we're, we're approaching this from two different angles. So we're print, printing in high detailed color, but also we're printing in high detailed geometry. So we're, our print, um, our Z height resolutions range from 19 to 42 microns. Well, let's say at uh, 22 microns, you're able to print the tubes around that oil derrick, if that's what that thing is. Um, you're able to print to get uh, a decent print out of that that you wouldn't be able to get out of a coarser um, Z type resolution. So, but also, I mean, if you look at the architecture, the, the building designed by David Munson, on the left, um, you're able to use the color to kind of fill in kind of perhaps window sills or um, details on gates that um, frankly, that you just wouldn't be able to get in other technologies. So, I mean, for architecture, um, for, I mean, there's quality for with GIS mapping, you'd be able to get resolution from uh, drone footage and for different scans that frankly just wasn't available in any other technologies. So for this next section, I'm gonna, um, we're gonna just briefly discuss a couple of our, our key reference customers. And uh, the first one being um, mixed dimensions as, as Josh mentioned, as I mentioned earlier. So um, they're founded in 2013 purchased their first Milwaukee printer in 2018, and currently have three. But what's amazing about mixed dimensions is that they do super high quality work. So prior to having the Milwaukee printer, they were hand painting um, the, the models through very highly skilled artists, which they still do. Or there, there's things that need to be hand painted still, but the, I'm pretty sure the bulk of their work is done on the three Mamaki printers that are printing 24 seven. And so, as you could see here, they're able to get detail, just, I mean, a customized detail. And so, I mean, what, what this, the vertical speaks to is the ability to create customization easily with, with the printer. And it's able to define the customization that they're putting into each one of these spaceships that are, are seen here. And I mean, with the, the, the um, the human body, the human anatomy um, starter that they did that the other two, the other uh, photographs depict, I mean, show the detail that you could get. And so they're combining brilliant software design and they've got their secret sauce to make what they do different than what anybody else does. But they're using the, the base point of what the Mamaki offers, the 10 million colors, the water soluble support. I mean, the reliability of the printer to um, create a really uh, nicely growing business. So I, I um, highly recommend that you check out their site to see what they're doing. Um, frankly, I can't um, adequately detail everything that they're doing, but I'm very impressed with the quality of the work and how they're able to take the Mamaki printer and just take it to that next level. So the next um, key customer that I'll be talking about is Funcon. I don't know if you've been into a retail store recently. Honestly, I haven't because I think I'm under quarantine. But the last time I was in a store, which might have been a month ago, was at Staples. And I think I was shipping something in Staples. And in the corner of the Staples was a, a Funko display of something. So um, they've been able to um, basically they're printing or they're, they're manufacturing pop culture. As the slide says, they're um, manufacturing over 13,000 SKUs. I mean, it's it's amazing what they're able to do, how they're doing it. They've got, as as it says, you know, 1,100 license. So basically, how that how that um, relates to the Mamaki printer that they bought is that they're able to quickly iterate, they're quickly to design, they're able to get things approved by license by their licensees or and they're able to create exact color to make them move at the speed in which they're which they need to to move is this environment. 
So, I mean, just super dynamic, great company to be associated with. So, another key customer of ours is the Smithsonian Institute. And um, as you probably know, museums are um, just like everything else in our world, museums are changing. So, they're, they need to be more interactive. They're trying to be more tactile. They are in um, for digitizing their experience. And the Smithsonian is just an amazing organization for us to be associated with because as a public institution, they have a mandate to share this information that they're doing, that they're, they're a leader of um, digital scanning. So they're scanning their entire collections of million items. And, um, you know, so, I mean, God knows what what's involved with scanning everything that they have but they're but they're making that all public and um so you could download a wide variety of, of um digital information if you didn't already know this and and print their um assets on your computer whether it's a mamaki or any other printer but that being said i mean so they're they're trying to refine this for all museums and they needed the absolute best printer at reproducing color possible. And of course, they chose the Mamaki printer. So they're able to allow the museum goers to touch things that weren't touchable. And, um, and the Mamaki printer allows it, the reproduction to be good enough to be shown in a museum, to be museum quality, I guess, as you would say. And, and so they're able to um, alter the experience of what a museum is. So um, we're going to be continuing to be doing marketing with them. And once again, they're just the um, absolute best organization for us to be associated with. And, and um, look forward to doing a lot of amazing work with them. Another one of our key customers is Milwaukee Tools. And anybody who's done any work on their house or been in a Home Depot lately uh, obviously knows who Milwaukee Tools are. I mean, they're a no-nonsense manufacturer of tools and so they chose the Mamaki printer to color match the red um, it's the Mamaki um, material that we've really talked much about but it's an ABS like material it's durable and it's um, excellent for prototyping so one other um, application that I want to talk to you about is here at Forge and for a certain uh, segment of the world, um, you had to have been under a rock in the month of February to not be aware of what was going on through a forge company based in Santa Monica, California. And so they've been, they've been printing um, game figurines, gameplay figurines, previously in monochromatic um, fashion. So um, the color of the material, usually, I guess, a white or gray. And so they announced that they were going to do a Kickstarter in February, and um, they had a goal of 42,000. So they needed the absolute best color for the figurines, which I believe are about an inch and a half in size. And so what, what the, among the valued um, components of the figurine for the customer is its unique um, um, pieces that they're holding, the little the um, adornments to the um, to the fashions, um, detailing and facial hair, um, as you can see the little owl character on that guy in the left hand. I mean, so it's fine details that have to be accurately uh, reproduced in color. And so naturally, they chose the uh, Mamaki printer, and they highlighted that in the Mamaki in the uh, Kickstarter offering. And so it was just amazing to watch as the goal went from, as they blew through the 42,000 goal. I'm pretty darn sure it was on the first day I became aware of this, a couple of days in at a million dollars. And so they ended up hitting $3.1 million in pledges. So anybody who um, is doubting the value of this marketplace, take heed. There's, there is, um, I mean, this though what's possible to do in this marketplace hasn't been done. I mean, the beauty of all additive manufacturing is that we're writing the history as we go, but particularly with a Mamaki printer, because this was never really 
existed before that you you on the the webinar right now you are the people who are going to write this history so i mean we're here to help and assist and figure out how how we as a partner can build your business but if you look at hero forge and and what this offering shows about the marketplace what could be done and then another aspect that i haven't really hit upon is that the way i mean so one of the questions in, in josh's section is is this is, is this a production printer well if you're printing sixty two thousand of something i would say it is so um so 62 so sixty two thousand of these figurines have been ordered they're in the process of being made obviously it's a complicated process but it's it's happening so i mean this is happening in real time so we're here as partners to if you figure out do you need 62,000 of something or six, um, we're here to help you figure out um, what the future looks like. But um, I just think the Hero Forge application is something that um, really kind of blew my mind. So with that, um, I will thank you for your time. Thanks, yes. Fred. I think Good, uh, I sure. got your. I think I got the uh, the chat questions covered. So Good. all we have to do right now is uh, find Jaime in my list here and we'll make him a presenter. Uh, very quick, um, I'm just going to uh, explain how um, how Threadlink works. So Threadlink, it's uh, basically the software that we use to, to send jobs to the printer. So uh, in here, you can create your layouts, you know, import the files, create your layouts, and uh, do a small modifications to the color mode um, and create the estimates as well. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna go uh, super quick um, into it, like straight, straight into it, not, not too much uh, <laughs> talking here. And okay, so uh, here's a, a thrilling uh, interface. Uh, you will be able to see this is your uh, 3D scene. Uh, and this is basically the, the machines platform. This is the 20 by 20 and, uh, and 12 inches uh, tall uh, space. Uh, so basically, to load up a, a file, so you can uh, you can hit uh, the load data button and add the file and use Explorer. Or, and for example, I'm gonna add uh, this uh, mesh over here. And I'm gonna hit open. And uh, right here, you can you can have the the, the option to uh, to group the files. I'll show you that in in a couple of seconds. Uh, in here, you can uh, you know select the number of copies. I'm gonna put uh, uh, five copies. And then uh, I'm gonna hit okay. So like you can see, I have a, it's like a gel bottle <clears throat> into it. But uh, this uh, particular uh, mesh, uh, actually it's, it's a composition. So I'm gonna um, add the, uh, the rest of the components and, and I will try to, to um, I'm gonna try to, try to get uh, like a printable um, file out of it. I'm gonna delete these guys first, and then um, one cool feature that uh, Thrilling has is actually a uh, drag and drop. So I'm just gonna open my um, Explorer here, and I'm going to select uh, all the all the um, all the components of, of my part. So you can see here, this is an OBJ file. So this is the mesh part of it. Uh, on the bottom, I have the uh, material libraries. Now this is a most, um, more into the OBJ file and I also have three PNG files which are uh, the textures and this is where the color is going to come from. <clears throat> so I'm going to select this and I'm going to drag and drop and in here I'm going to have also the options. So I want to group all of them together because I want to have everything as, as um, I want everything to be one part. So I'm going to group everything here and you can see the link uh, in between them, so that means that they're they're uh, linked together and they're grouped together. So basically, uh, the uh, the mesh is going to have the same position. Uh, it's going to have the same position as in this. Going to hit OK here. And uh, right now, we are going to uh, change the color mode. Uh, so in here, I have the the four components. Uh, uh, I have an extra layer of protection um, for the file, so I'm going to change the color mode into clear. And like, if I zoom in, you can see 
a little bit of a like an overcoat into it. So this shell is uh, made out of clear ink, and this will allow me to uh, polish the part without actually destroying the color of the surface. So that's kind of that's that's kind of like a, a next step on on the design stage, but it definitely helps out when whenever you're working with uh, bottles or or clear applications. So you can always put a little bit more of a, of an overcoat. All right. Uh, now I also have the body here. I want this to be uh, clear, but uh, translucent. But I also want to keep the the color and that inf that text information. So what I'm going to do here is uh, go into the body part and select the skeleton color. So with skeleton color, it's going to have that uh, it's going to have like a green tint to it, uh, the same gradient that I had. Uh, um, and that color information is going to still come from from my uh, texture map. And uh, I'm going to have the uh, empty space here uh, because I need to uh, to fake that there is uh, that is liquid in here. So basically, I'm going to I'm going to hit clear uh, for this guy here. Um, and then I have the liquid, so I'm going to just let it uh, be solid for this uh, example. <clears throat> so once I'm done, so I'm, I'm pretty much I'm pretty much ready. Uh, the uh, the mesh is into the right position, but if I want to change anything, I have very uh, basic uh, tools in here. It's really it's really easy to use. So I can uh, so, uh, change the position by dragging from from the arrows uh, in here, or um, I can also uh, type in my values here. So it's really simple. If I, or I can just move uh, the slider. I can also rotate here. Uh, so it's. Uh, it's pretty simple, really, really easy to use. So again, I can do it manually. Yeah, I can do it manually, or I can just, you know, hit the constraint here, 90 degrees, uh, etc. So really simple to do. So again, I'm gonna try to uh, get the uh, part as closest um, to to the uh, print head, so it it will uh, take less time. So once I'm done here, uh, what I'm go I can uh, select the print mode. So in here is where uh, your Z resolution is going to be uh, is going to be uh, determined. So you will have high speed. This is uh, 42 microns. Also, you will have um, standard mode, which is going to be uh, 32 microns. High quality is going to be 22 microns. This is uh, uh, the one that we use uh, for most of our samples. Uh, because it's a really smooth, uh, it's also a really smooth finish. <clears throat> so uh, and people really like it, and it's easier also to to polish or or to uh, uh, clear coat as well uh, for finishing and color clear, which is uh, also 19 microns. But this one has a uh, this one is limited to a certain uh, size as well. <clears throat> uh, once I'm done with that, so I can uh, basically either uh, use any of these buttons here. So it could be calculate, estimate. Um, modeling time or in volume, so all all of them they will basically uh, run the slicer and, and it's going to give you an estimate of how much material and time uh, the machine is going to take. So we're going to have uh, five hours here. Uh, the support uh, oh, it's a little glitch in there, but we're going to have uh, 300 uh, cc's of clear white um, color is going to be for uh, all the channels CMYK. And your total in, in here. Uh, also, you can uh, calculate the cost if you want to know the. Uh, I mean, you can input the cost in here. I'm going to show you real quick. Um, so basically, you can go into preferences here and uh, go into the estimate um, tab. So you can hit cost estimate in here. Uh, the currency, which is um, you know United States dollar or whatever uh, your currency is, and and you can put out uh, the a value on. Uh, how much it's going to cost you per CC. All right. <clears throat> and uh, once I'm there, I'm, I'm pretty much ready. Uh, so basically, uh, in here, if the machine is connected, is uh, locally connected, so if you can issue the modeling job right now, it's uh, grayed out. Are you able to see it right now? Uh, we can see your, uh, yeah, yeah, the. Uh, yeah, I have the slur on. Yeah. So, well, uh, so. Uh, very quick, um, I'm just going to uh, explain how um, 
how Threadlink works. So Threadlink, it's uh, basically the software that we use to to send jobs to the printer. So uh, in here, you can create your layouts, you know, import the files, create your layouts, and uh, do a small modifications to the color mode, um, and create the estimates as well. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna go uh, super quick um, into it, like straight straight into it. Not not too much uh, <laughs> talking. Here and okay, so uh, here is a uh, Threadlink uh, interface. Uh, you will be able to see this is your uh, Threadlink scene, uh, and this is basically the the machine's platform. This is the 20 by 20 and uh, and 12 inches uh, tall uh, space. Uh, so basically, to load up a, a file, so you can uh, you can hit uh, the load data button and add the file and use Explorer or and for example, I'm gonna add uh, this uh, mesh over here. And I'm gonna hit open. And uh, right here, you can you can have the the, the option to uh, to group the files. I'll show you that in in a couple of seconds. Uh, in here, you can uh, you know select the number of copies. I'm gonna put uh, uh, five copies, and then uh, I'm gonna hit OK. So like you can see, I have a it's like a gel bottle. <clears throat> Into it, but uh, this uh, particular uh, mesh uh, actually is is a composition. So I'm gonna um, add the uh, the rest of the components, and and I will try to to um, I'm gonna try to try to get uh, like a printable um, file out of it. I'm gonna delete these guys first, and then um, one cool feature that uh, Threadlink has is actually a uh, drag and drop. So I'm just gonna open my um, explorer here. And I'm going to select uh, all the all the um, all the components of, of my part. So you can see here, this is an OBJ file. So this is the mesh part of it. Uh, on the bottom, I have the uh, material libraries. Now this is a most, um, more into the OBJ file, and I also have three PNG files, which are uh, the textures, and this is where the color is going to come from. <clears throat> so I'm going to select this, and I'm going to drag and drop. And in here, I'm going to have also the options. So I want to group all of them together because I want to have everything as, as um, I want everything to be one part. So I'm going to group everything here. And you can see the link uh, in between them. So that means that they're, they're uh, linked together and they're grouped together. So basically, uh, the uh, the mesh is going to have the same position. Uh, it's going to have the same position as in this. Uh, Gonna hit OK here, and uh, right now we are going to uh, change the color mode. Uh, so in here I have the, the four components. Uh, uh, I have an extra layer of protection um, for the file, so I'm going to change the color mode into clear. And like if I zoom in, you can see a little bit of a like an overcoat into it. So this shell is uh, made out of clear ink, and this will allow me to uh, polish the part without actually destroying the color of the surface. So that's kind of that's that's kind of like a, a next step on on the design stage, but it definitely helps out when whenever you're working with uh, bottles or or clear applications. So you can always put a little bit more of a, of an overcoat. All right. Uh, now I also have the body here. I want this to be uh, clear, but uh, translucent. But I also want to keep the, the color and that inf that text information. So what I'm going to do here is uh, go into the body part and select the skeleton color. So with skeleton color, it's going to have that. Uh, it's going to have like a green tint to it, uh, the same gradient that I had. Uh, um, and that color information is going to still come from from my uh, texture map. And uh, I'm going to have the uh, empty space here uh, because I need to uh, to fake that there is uh, that is liquid in here. So basically, I'm going to I'm going to hit clear uh, for this guy here. Um, and then I have the liquid, so I'm going to just let it uh, be solid for this uh, example. <clears throat> so once I'm done, so I'm, I'm pretty much I'm pretty much ready. Uh, the uh, the mesh is into the right position, but if I want to change anything, I have very uh, basic uh, tools in here. It's really it's really easy to use. 
So I can uh, select, uh, change the position by dragging from, from the arrows uh, in here. Or um, I can also uh, type in my values here. So it's really simple. If, uh, or I can just move uh, the slider. I can also rotate here. Uh, so it's uh, it's pretty simple, really, really easy to use. So again, I can do it manually. Yeah, I can do it manually, or I can just you know hit the constraint here, 90 degrees, uh, etc. So really simple to do. So again, I'm going to try to uh, get the uh, part as close um, to to the uh, print head, so it, it will uh, take less time. So once I'm done here, uh, what I'm go I can uh, select the print mode. So in here is where uh, your Z resolution is going to be uh, is going to be uh, determined. So you will have high speed. This is uh, 42 microns. Also, you will have um, standard mode, which is going to be uh, 32 microns. High quality is going to be 22 microns. This is uh, uh, the one that we use uh, for most of our samples. Uh, because it's a really smooth, uh, it's a really smooth finish. <clears throat> so uh, and people really like it, and it's easier also to to polish or or to uh, uh, clear coat as well uh, for finishing and color clear, which is uh, also 19 microns. But this one has a uh, this one is limited to a certain uh, size as well. <clears throat> uh, once I'm done with that, so I can uh, basically either uh, use any of these buttons here. So it could be calculate estimate. Um, modeling time or in volume. So all, all of them, they will basically uh, run the slicer and, and it's going to give you an estimate of how much material and time uh, the machine is going to take. So we're going to have uh, five hours here. Uh, the support, uh, oh, it's a little glitch in there. But we're going to have uh, 300 uh, cc's of clear, white. Um, color is going to be for uh, all the channels, CMYK and your total in, in here. Uh, also, you can uh, calculate the cost if you want to know the, uh, I mean, you can input the cost in here. I'm going to show you real quick. Um, so basically, you can go into preferences here and uh, go into the estimate um, tab. So you can hit cost estimate in here, uh, the currency, which is um, you know United States dollar or whatever uh, your currency is. And, and you can put out the a value on uh, how much it's going to cost you per CC. All right. <clears throat> and uh, once I'm there, I'm, I'm pretty much ready. Uh, so basically, uh, in here, if the machine is connected, is uh, locally connected, so you can issue the modeling job. Right now, it's uh, grayed out. Basically, uh, another thing that you can do also with 3Link, you can uh, prepare an estimate, which is uh, make a, a small report on um, so you can see it. So I'm going to save this real quick, and let me go back um, into the documents. Audio report. So I can double click here, and I can see um, I can see all my values here. You know how much it's going to take, and and also how many uh, shells do I have into um, in 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 my scene. So yeah, that's that's basically it. Like a like a quick um, overview on 3 link is it's really simple. Um, the only condition is uh, obviously uh, your mesh has to be water tight, so uh, no inverted faces, uh, no bad edges. Um, so that's why it's a, it's always a good practice to run it uh, through uh, either uh, materialized magics or uh, netfab or uh, or the software of your uh, preference. All right, thanks, Jaime. Does anybody yeah. have any questions for Jaime? Uh, when these machines are run in production mode with print jobs that are 30, 50 hours, can they realistically be expected to complete the job without print head failures or clogged nozzles? Absolutely. So the longest print that we have done, uh, we did a 169 hour print um, that was completely unmanned. Uh, we've done multiple prints that were over 100 hours. Uh, the machine does maintenance as it needs to do it. Um, yeah, it's an it's a extremely reliable machine. Uh, and then Ashley asked, is the color portion of the bottle geometry intersecting with the clear extended geometry or a clear shell? Uh, there you go. I need to answer it. Oh, yeah, I mean, 
yeah, just I'm gonna make a quick um, yeah explanation here. I'm gonna separate uh, real quick these guys. So I'm gonna yeah release a group here, and yeah, basically uh, all these shells are are pretty much intersecting each other. Uh, the machine will not um, add any uh, will not add material as as it uh, gets into intersection. So there is you can be a little bit lazy when it comes to to uh, finishing uh, certain files. Uh, it will. It will definitely. Uh, I mean, if you really want to, the only the only reason to to actually unify uh, certain parts is is because it's it's it is uh, you know a single part, uh, or there is no uh, pieces to be moved. Well, when it comes to this kind of parts, it's it's uh, yeah you can you can have the intersections and and there is no problem. All right. Thanks, Simon. So what we'll do is uh, we'll send out a follow-up email to everybody and make sure that you have Jaime's email, my email, Fred's email as well. Uh, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to send them to us and we would love to get feedback on the presentation. Uh, but I wanted to thank everybody for coming. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, if there's no other questions, then we're gonna go ahead and stop the, uh, uh, the presentation now and wish everybody have a great weekend.